Okay, to go along with my vlog on the CVT transmission, I thought I would kind of add a little tutorial on how the CVT works, the basis that it works upon. So let's say you have two pulleys of the same circumference, same diameter from here to here. Axle inside of each one of them. Let's, let's name this one E. This is the engine pulley. Let's name this one D. This is the drive pulley. So let's say, after you put the car in drive and you're about to take off from a stop, you have a belt. And on this pulley, it's on all the way on the outside of the cir circumference. And on the engine pulley, it's all the way towards the inside of the pulley so that this pulley here let's say the gear ratio is 20 to 1 excuse me that's supposed to be a 1 <laughs> excuse me 1 okay so that means for every 20 times that this pulley here spins this pulley is only going to make one complete revolution. So for every 20 complete revolutions of this, this is going to make one revolution. Now let's just say that this pulley is connected directly to the wheel. So let's say every time this pulley here makes one revolution, the tires make one complete revolution. So when the car takes off, when it first takes off, the engine that's connected to this, the RPM of the engine is going to go up higher. So it's going to go higher and the car is going to move less fast, but it's going to be easier for that engine to drive those wheels. So this is going to, when it first takes off, we've got a 20 to 1 gear ratio. And as the car gains speed, gains velocity, the ratio is going to change. Let's just, we'll just leave this one at 1. Now the car, let's say now the car is moving at 25 miles an hour. So at 25 miles an hour, that same gear ratio is not appropriate because if it stayed at 20 to 1, the engine would, RPMs, let's say, would go to 5,000 RPMs and you'd only be going 20 miles an hour. So as the car gains speed, you want the gear ratio to change. So let's say now, at 25 miles an hour, it looks like that. This is a side view of the belt. So now, let's say hypothetically, Let's say now it's 10 to 1, which means for every one revolution of this gear, for every one revolution of the tire, this spins 10 times. So now it's not quite as easy for the engine to move the car, but it's more appropriate because the car is doing 25. So the car continues to accelerate. You want to get up to, let's say, 50 miles an hour. So at that point, Let's say it looks like this from the side. So this belt is almost to the outside of that pulley. And let's say now it's five to one. So again, for every five revolutions, one, two, three, four, five, this pulley will make one complete revolution. And the tires will make one revolution. This is just the learning tool, okay? So, Let's say, for example, the car is now doing 50 miles an hour, and the belt looks like this. So now, just for example, it's one-to-one -one ratio. So for every one time this pulley spins, this one will spin. So they're both equal. In reality, this pulley changes to and this pulley in a CVT transmission, but this is just for demonstration. Now this is a side view, and let's, let's pretend you're looking at it with an x-ray, and you can see that belt on the inside. Now that is the idea of a CVT, continuously variable transmission. Now if you were to look at that belt and the pulley, pulleys from the front, it would look similar to this, and excuse my bad drawing. This is just a very crude drawing to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. It's just, like I said, 
to give you an idea so you can visualize it. We're going to look at the front pulley only, the, the engine pulley. So there's an axle going through here that's connected to the engine. Okay, now this pulley is called a variator and it moves in and out like this. Okay, so just keep in mind that on that axle, these pulleys, each side of the pulley moves in and out. This is called a variator, like I said. Now, if you're looking at it from the, fr from the front, let's say the belt rides right in there. So you're looking at it from the front, so this belt wraps the whole way around. And the points of contact are right here. In these four places, just, just in this space and time, all the way around the pulley. So that when this pulley comes in, okay, let's say it starts out from a stop like this, okay, with the belt riding on the inside of the circumference of the pulley. So it starts out like this, and as the car takes off, as that gear ratio changes, it's going to move towards the outside of the pulley. So it's going to move in this direction because what's going to happen is these two sides are going to squeeze together. And when they do that, the belt, let's say, is going to ride up a little higher in the, uh, in the variator. Then when the car slows down and it wants a higher gear ratio, let's say it wants to go back to 20 to 1, these belts, are, these pulleys, these variators are going to move out and that belt is going to ride down in the groove of the variator. There's something called clamping force going in like this. In this direction. Okay, this is this is moving horizontally. Let's say this is in the Y direction. So to propel the car, these are going to move in and at some point the, this belt that wraps the whole way around is going to get wedged in there. The contact points are going to be here and here. And what you're relying on is you're relying on the friction between these points to lock the belt to the variator and propel the car. Now let me show you a side view of that. Okay, so I don't quite have a whiteboard that's big enough, but I'll leave this up here because that's one of the complaints I got. So this is a side view. So there's two pulleys again. Remember this is looking at it from the front. It's an axle inside of each one of them. This is the drive pulley say and this is the engine pulley. So at some point there's going to be enough clamping force. This is the belt, hopefully you can see that. Coming in from the sides, the pressure's coming in in this direction. And it's going to clamp onto that belt in these spots that I told you. And it's going to lock up, it's going to lock the variator to the belt. And this point is going to be locked the whole way around. And as this spins, it's going to drive the car. It's not just one, it's on, on that part of the variator, but it's all these spots here are locked up to that pulley until the car wants to change its ratio again. And then this belt is going to move vertically up and down the variator. On the Subaru, for example, and any most cars that I know of that have a CBT in the modern uh, world here have a steel belt. This is a steel belt. This is not rubber. These, this is a steel belt. And since that's a steel belt, and this is a steel pulley, these are variators, you don't want the steel belt filing away at this variator when it's changing ratios. When this, when this is moving in and out, and the belt is slipping further 
out on the circumference of the pulley or towards the inside. So it has this special oil called CBT fluid. And that CBT fluid is designed so that when this is changing ratios, let's see the color I have, this steel belt is sitting in a film of oil which keeps it nice and lubricated so that as this belt is traveling in and out in circumference of the variator, so it's moving vertically in and up and down the variator, we don't want this belt to ever touch the variator because it'll chew it up until it gets its max clamping force and it locks in and it locks that belt in place that drives the car. So that if you go to say one of the quick lube places and they, they say they're going to do a transmission flush. So they drain your CBT fluid out, but they put in the wrong fluid back in. They put regular ATF fluid in, which is much thinner than the CBT fluid. And what's going to happen in that case is the ATF fluid is not going to have the viscosity and the thickness that it needs to keep that belt from touching that variator when it's moving in and out and when it's changing gear ratios. And it'll chew those, that, those variators up and it'll destroy your transmission for good. So that's why you shouldn't take it to uh, one of the quick loop places. This is just my attempt um, to try and explain this and make this clear. I think it's clear in my head. I'm trying to explain it so that you understand a little better. Hopefully that has cleared it up a little bit. Um, I'd like your feedback on this video and please let me know if this was completely unclear or if it helped clear some things up or if I need to go further. Please leave um, your comments. Thank you.